Welcome to part two of our lesson on the derivative of a function. Um, so in the previous lesson we defined the derivative f prime of x as the limit as h goes to zero of f at x plus h minus f at x all over h. So hopefully you remember that. So we're going to start off with now is just a little little notation little bit of notation for derivatives. So one thing that comes up with derivatives is we have a lot of notations. So let's say um, if if you have a function y equals f at x then the derivative is written or notated so there's one notation we've already seen, and that would be this one, f prime of x. So it's written f prime of x. So that's one way to write it. Or another way to write it is like this. So it'll be like a dy by dx, and sometimes it's not even, it's like a fancy d sometimes. I'll just write it usually as a regular d. So you read that dy by dx, and this is what we call uh, Leibniz notation named after a mathematician, last name Leibniz. I believe his first name was uh, Godfred. So he was sort of one of the inventors of, one of the guys who invented calculus, along with Newton, um, or discovered calculus. So this is a common notation, so, uh, you know, it, it looks more cumbersome than this notation. It looks like there's more going on. Right? You have to write more, so people often like this one. But as you see, when we do uh, get more involved in calculus, sometimes this notation is uh, more useful or more illustrative. Or another way to write it, and most mathematicians do not do this, um, but you see physics guys do this a lot. They just write like y prime. And then uh, another way, even still, would be d by dx, so this is kind of like Leibniz notation, and then you put the function here, f at x. So sometimes you actually write down what f at x is equal to in there. Um, so that's kind of the same as Leibniz notation. So, you know, we have these kind of, I guess, four common notations that uh, we'll see, and I'll try to use it them throughout the videos or the lessons. Um, and then another thing about notation, if you evaluate a derivative at a point, you eat a derivative at a point, so these are the derivative, you know, just at a general point x, but if you're doing it at a specific point, then this notation tends to be kind of the nicest, because you can just write f prime at a, and then just sub a into the equation. Or, when you're doing Leibniz notation, you would write dy by dx, the same way. And then you'll usually put a vertical line, and then just at the bottom put x equals a. And then, you know, sub a in. So, you know, that's just a little bit about notation. Um, so, hope, try not to get confused. Uh, with the notation because it's really just sort of like the extra, um, you know, it's it's not essential. Okay, so first example, if f of x equals 2x squared minus 1, we want to determine the derivative. So we'll use the notation f prime, and, you know, si since it's written like this, f of x equals something, that's usually you use, you know, the notation which corresponds with how the question's written. So now I'll do limit as h goes to zero of, and I'll just write the definition down first. So that's our definition of derivative. All over h equals the limit oh, as h goes to zero of, and now we'll sub in x plus h into the function. So that's the first thing, minus, and then f of x. All over h. So 
so now how do you evaluate this limit? Um, one strategy would be to just start by expanding. So 2x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 1 minus 2x squared plus 1 all over h. So we got 2x squared plus 4x each plus 2h squared minus 1 minus 2x squared plus 1 all over h. And now notice a lot of stuff uh, kind of cancels out. You got a 2x squared, a minus 2x squared, a minus 1, and a plus 1. Since the limit is h goes to 0 of and now let's factor out an h. So we're left with 4x plus 2h all over h. Those h's divide out. And notice we can do that because uh, h does not equal 0. So you have 4x plus 2h. Sorry. And now if you let h actually go to 0, this is going to become 0. We can use direct substitution now because we don't get 0 over 0. And then you just get 4x. So f prime at x is equal to 4x. So the derivative of that original thing, the derivative of this function is this function down here. Okay, so a second example, we want to determine the derivative of this function, which is a uh, radical square root function, and state its domain. So state the domain of its derivative. So we'll start by just using that formula. So now since the function's written y equals, I'll use Leibniz notation, dy by dx. So the limit as h goes to zero of, um, I'm still gonna have to use f at x plus h minus f at x all over h. The limit as h goes to 0 of, so I'll put x plus h into this, x plus h minus 1 minus just f at x all over h. So now you might say, okay, how do I evaluate this and you can't sub it in, you can't use direct substitution so one of the strategies for evaluating limits when you had square roots was to uh, multiply or rationalize, multiply by the conjugate so x plus h minus 1 and then plus so conjugate would be opposite sign all times the same thing so top and bottom by the same Thing. so you're not changing the value right this thing is really just equivalent to 1 so multiply by the conjugate you'd get this times this so it'd be x plus h minus 1 uh, the middle terms would cancel out and then you get minus x minus 1 all over h times and then I won't expand this and you might not remember why with the other limits or if you don't you'll see why in a second so now if I collect like terms on the top uh, my x's will go away and my minus one and then minus minus plus one will go away so I just be left with h on the numerator and then h so hopefully you see why we didn't uh, multiply that h in originally so now if the limit is h goes to 0 of 1 over square root x plus h minus 1 plus square root of x minus 1 
and now if we let h go to 0 we will no longer get uh, 0 over 0 That's 0 plus 1 plus so I let h go to 0 so that's why I'm you know once you let h actually go to 0 you stop writing the limit so I'd have square root of x um, minus 1 plus square root of x minus 1 which would equal 1 over and then these are the same so 2 root x minus 1 so this was can you see that this was dy by dx okay so this is the derivative of the original function which was y equals square root of x minus 1 so that's the derivative. Um, the next part of the question was to find the derivative of the, do or not, sorry, the domain of the derivative. So what's the domain of this? Well, there's two things, right? The bottom cannot equal zero. So root x, two root x minus one cannot equal zero. So this is for the domain. So when would that equal zero? Well, okay, so divide by two. And well, let's say when does it actually equal zero? Um, square both sides, so x plus one. So x would equal one. So that means x cannot equal one. And then also x minus one. You know, the thing inside the square root must be greater than or equal to zero, which means x must be greater than or equal to one. So x, you know, uh, well it can't equal one, and it must be greater than or equal to one. So therefore the domain of f prime, oh no, sorry, yeah, of f prime, of the derivative is equal to uh, the set of all x such that x is bigger than, not or equal to, just bigger than zero, right? It's bigger than or equal to and it can't be one, so you take away the or equal to. Um, so just to see why that is, right, and like why is that if you think about what was the domain of the original function, well, the domain of the original function was that just this. And what does that look like? That looks like that. So the difference, you know, the domain of the original function was x is greater than or equal to one. So we've, you know, that's not zero. That's one. Um, the difference is the derivative it can't equal one, and you can kind of see why that is, right? Because at this point you have a an endpoint, so you can't draw a tangent at the endpoint to a graph. Um, so you, know, you lose that one point for the derivative of for the domain of the derivative that you had on the domain of the original function.